What's going on everybody? We are here in front of the saltwater tank today. My name is Paul. We got to do some things down in the sump. We're going to pimp it out. Let's do it. We are here at the sump now. And as you can see, algae, algae, algae. This is all because, here's more algae. This is because this light is creating way too much of a spread and it's causing algae to grow everywhere else. Now I found a solution to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to build that solution so that we can get the light and get that casting to stop. So let's do it. So the solution that we got is a piece of acrylic. Now these do come with this paper on it. All you got to do is wet it with some warm water and it'll come off really, really easy. Sometimes you'll get lucky and be able to get it off without that. But see how it's breaking? That's where it becomes frustrating because it just breaks and breaks. So if you guys run into trouble removing the backing on the acrylic, like I mentioned, if you get some warm water on it, you could soak it in there. It'll come off nice and easy. All right, so we got our acrylic now. So the next step is we're gonna measure in this area. So let's go ahead and just lift the light out of the way. Go ahead and move my scrubber out of the way. What we wanna do now is we wanna measure from here to here. Looks like it sits at about 11 inches. We need to see what it's gonna be like from this point to that point. 10 and three quarters. So all we gotta do is we need to get this acrylic and we need to cut it down to those sizes. The other thing is we need to measure how high it's gonna go. So we got our light here, right? So we're gonna go and we know that it's gonna sit this is about its sweet spot. It's always about that high. We need this to be seven inches high. So if we go seven inches high, we should be able to create something where the light is gonna just cast straight down here into the refugium section with the chato. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with seven and one quarter. I already made my mark here. I would recommend using something like a level, something that you could put some pressure on. Basically, you get lined up on one end, you get lined up on the other end, and then basically going to come in and score it. It is really easy to mess up and not do a straight line. So after you get a decent amount started, you can remove the level and go from there. And there you go. Now it'd be nice if I had something else to cut this with. Um, instead of having to score it because it did take a quite a bit of time to do this and again the lines aren't as straight as you would like them to be so uh, it works but there's obviously better solutions out there all right so now what we're doing is moving on to the width so we got the first part set now we're getting it uh, trimmed up to where it is going to fit exactly how I measured it out All right, guys, so not my best work. I talked to someone about um, how they glued it. They said they used super glue. I tried. It wouldn't hold, so um, it looks pretty bad, but it's going to serve its purpose um, instead of having to buy a new piece of acrylic. So let's see here. This is the back. This is the side. So what I'm going to use instead, zip ties right here. So what I ended up doing was getting a drill and drilling three holes onto each one so that we can use a zip tie to tighten them up together. We're gonna go ahead and get this guy stringed together. This is gonna go like this. Using the super glue did not work at all. That is why we're having to use these zip ties in the future. I will definitely make sure that I do more research and invest in acrylic cement. Okay, so here is the finished product. Again, we got it zip tied. I probably should have just started with that from the beginning, but it's gonna work. Let's go get it installed now. Okay, so check this out. Look at the cast of the light, how it just 
goes all over the place. So the point of this is to help eliminate that. Let's do this. We're gonna lift this guy up. Go in place like this. Okay, so now this guy goes down like this. So check that out. No more cast. And then we can turn the intensity up. You know, we could do whatever we want. And we know now that it's gonna do a pretty good job of keeping it right here in this chamber. If you look, yeah, sure, there's a little bit of ambient light that hits over there. It's because it's shining on the red acrylic, that's why. But now there's not gonna be direct light bouncing on all these areas of the sump and causing that algae growth. What I did was, is I notched it out here and here so that it would be able to lay on top of this part. And then again with the zip ties, I mean, it looks bad, um, but it sits right on these sections of the refugium and it's really great. And plus it does not block any of that water flow down there and it doesn't block water flow going right there. So it really, really works perfect. I saw this on Facebook, really glad I did. So the next step is pond matrix. What I want to do is add this pond matrix to the sump. Now this is the two liter, which treats 200 gallons. So basically this should be enough filtration for 200 gallons worth of water. Um, and it's good stuff. I mean, you can't go wrong with this kind of stuff. So we're gonna get these things rinsed out. And then also I got one of these mesh bags that you can use for protecting the filter so nothing goes into it. So we're gonna put all this pond matrix into the bag, into the sump. What I'm doing now is getting the pond matrix all rinsed. Now I'm using RODI water from my container here and we're just gonna mix it up a couple times and pour it out and as long as it's pretty clear, then we're good to go. But you're not gonna wanna use your normal tap water with this if you're gonna go in a reef tank or even a normal tank. Use tank water um, or RODI water. We got all the pond matrix washed. Now this is the bag that I'm using. You can see about the size that it is and it's got a drawstring, so no metal in here, which is good. Now, people use these um, to wrap around their return pumps so that it'll go stop debris and things like that from getting into it. Um, so I know it's gonna allow for water flow, which is good. So we're gonna get the matrix inside the bag. The Pond Matrix is a great product. It's nice and light and porous, so it allows for all that bacteria to gather and grow onto it. Good, good stuff. There we go, so you can see the matrix inside there. And then all we have to do, just pull the drawstring like this and basically allow it to be in a chamber so that water runs over it. What's pretty cool about this, so we're gonna go turn this off and just move this up out of the way. But what's really great is you can just pull this guy right out <laughs> and you're rocking and rolling. So I'm just gonna place this up over here out of our way. Like I was mentioning back here, in this chamber over here, I just have a bunch of rubble from broken rocks. So I'm gonna pull these out. See, we got that rock down there. Look at how tall that chamber is. So I could fit this in there for sure. So basically, we just need to get this guy. Down over here. All right, so there we have it. We got the bag in there with the media. You can definitely see the media through the bag. So that is a good thing. Now look at all that algae down there and on the skimmer, that is all from that spread of the light, which we fixed. Um, now what I got here is my lines. So right here you can see on November 19th, that was the line that I had the water at on the main chambers. And then on the return chamber, here we go. 1119, we got our line. So we know that my water is basically where I need it. So if I ever want to adjust anything, like we got the auto top off back there, but all I got to do with this, if I go and I lift this up, we'll show you, Let's see, there we go. So now that's up, you'll know, watch this. See, it's going down because it's taking longer for the water to get to this pump. So all I got to do is just adjust that a little bit and you can see that we're getting back up to our line and we're getting back up to our line there. 
So that is pretty rad. Now we gotta just get this guy in place. Now we're on the walls, so we know light's not gonna penetrate through there. Move our refugium light back on, turn it on. Man, that is epic. So the water's a bit cloudy right now and bubbly. It's because of adding the pond matrix, you know, the last bit of air trying to get out of there. But taking a look at the tank here, the main reason why we did that was because I wanna be able to pull some rock out of the display but I can't pull rock out of this display and not replace it because this beneficial bacteria that's growing on this rock is what's keeping everything alive. We know that. So if I go and pull all this out because I added this, that's going to be an issue if this has not fully established with bacteria. So the plan is maybe pull a piece out per week to allow for that to establish. But I got to pull it out because I got too much rock. It's too steep with planting corals up here that are gonna extend out. It's gonna cause shadowing problems down here. I got a comment on that on one of my last videos. So that was a great comment, thanks for doing that. Also, um, I was concerned about no coralline algae, but as you can see, we got right there on the uh, Two Little Fishies algae clip. That is coralline algae. If you look there on the pump, coralline algae. We got some growing there. So I know that the tank is getting to a good place because we got that coralline algae growing, which is super, super exciting. So what did you guys think of the video? Building the baffle down over there for the light so it stops spreading across the sump and causing major algae problems, as you guys seen from that. So that's gonna be a really great addition to the system. Not my idea. Somebody sent it to me and then I seen it on Facebook and got some help and all that stuff. So really, really really great that works awesome and then plus we got that bag of media back there behind it which is going to be awesome shout out to cj's aquariums uh he mentioned the palm matrix to me when we were on a live stream and uh that is going to be crucial for the system which is going to allow me to pull rock out of here with that down there being 200 gallons worth of filtration um obviously i am not going to pull this out right away I'm gonna pull a piece out at a time, maybe a piece a week, because on the coral quarantine tank over there, I'm gonna quarantine my corals for one to two months uh, just to be safe. It's worth being safe. I mean, we don't want bugs in our tanks and, and bristle worms and all that kind of craziness. So I figured if I could pull a piece out per week, it allows for that bacteria to establish. And I can also get some frits and things like that and add some beneficial bacteria if I really wanted to. But I know the tank is doing really well because we got some coralline algae growing on some things which I was concerned about, but it's growing on there, which I'm super excited about. So anyway, I'm gonna quit my rambling. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys could comment down below what you guys think, that would be absolutely awesome. If you guys are fans of this video and fish videos in general, please consider clicking the subscribe button. That'd be absolutely epic and uh, super excited. We're getting closer and closer and closer to this thing, getting corals and growing and all that good stuff. But anyway, I said I'm gonna stop rambling. I didn't stop rambling. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Stay tanked.